Hi, I'm Jared Hillam. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the life cycle of data within your organization. Where does it start, what happens to it, and where does it end? We'll also talk about information and the differences between data and information and how they impact your business. So let's first start where data gets created. If you were to trace a transaction all the way back to the point that it started, you'd probably find a person typing that transaction into the system, whether it's a sales rep or uh, some other person in the organization. In fact, it's been found that over 70% of the information that gets created in an organization happens through people. So when the data gets into the system, what happens from that point? Well, other processes get kicked off. So the processing of that one order moves into other processes within the organization. Maybe it's order fulfillment and inventory and, uh, and manufacturing. Other pieces of the organization get impacted by that one order. In fact, there's also studies that have been shown that for every one asset of data that gets created, 10 additional assets of data get appended to it. Now, once that order has gone completely through the system all the way to the point that uh, that, that transaction has completed, and, that, and the transaction uh, ceases to be active, then it moves into uh, a storage decision. How long do we store that transaction? Uh, when do we delete it, etc. Now it's important to understand that this data represents a whole lot more than just a series of zeros and ones. It actually is representing the business's process. So you can imagine when this data is sitting basically under a black box because it's either too complicated to get at or uh, IT and business aren't getting along, that it can cause a lot of problems for a business. And let me give you a quick example. Recently, I conducted an internet-based order uh, for you know, a product for one of my cell phones. They sent me the product, but they sent only one of them, and I asked for three. Now, I sent a, a, a note back and called their customer service department, and their customer service department couldn't identify what had happened in the order. And it wasn't that they didn't want to, it just simply they did not have the data to do it. Now, I can tell you, hands down, I will never do business with that organization again. And that's the type of transaction that businesses are trying to avoid. Now, it's not just within the actual transaction itself that we need to be able to see how the process is working. We also need to be able to see the process as a whole, and we need to be able to see steps in the process over a period of time so we can see trends. We also need to do balance sheets and income statements and other strategic types of information. So being able to see that data is absolutely critical, and having it under a black box is just unacceptable. So let's imagine we can pull off this black box and actually get access to some of this data. Before I go any further, I want to make a distinction between data and information. Data is really what I would think of as something owned by the application. The inner workings of the application communicating with other inner workings of the application through its own data. But that data really doesn't represent a lot to business people. It's very difficult for business people to look at that kind of data and really understand something out of it. In order to get that data represent something to a business user, you actually need to pull a report. That's where we start getting information. So the first level of information is something I would call operational information. Operational represents uh, transaction level. It means that for this individual transaction or this small group of transactions, we're going to show you exactly what has happened. So a good example would be that customer service rep looking up my order. Another example could be maybe some checks that get, have to get printed at the end of the transaction. It's still part of the transaction process. Now, past the transaction, we're usually going a little bit higher up in the data. We're wanting to see groups of data. We're wanting to see groups of transactions. So maybe I want to see a year's worth of transactions. When we get to that point, we need to really start rolling up the data into strategic views so that the business can start making decisions as to, is the process working? Do we have the resources that we need? Can we produce a balance sheet and an income statement? These are all roll-ups of data. If you look at these transaction systems that exist in organizations, they're constantly changing. Companies get acquired. 
There might be a strategic change in the organization. Maybe a new product gets purchased and it needs to be incorporated with the rest of that uh, body of data. So what Intricity specializes in is simplifying that complexity of producing these reports and dashboards and aggregated sets of data against an ever-changing transaction system. And Intricity has the best practices and knows the products that can be introduced into organizations to best accomplish this task. I would encourage you to take a look at some of the success stories and examples that Intricity has been able to produce and some of the resources that Intricity brings to the table in order to make these types of projects a success.